Hello, everyone. Welcome to attend today's webinar. My name is Meng Nading. I'm your presenter today. In this webinar, we are going to cover harmonics overview, how to do the modeling in ETAP, applications of different analysis types, how to model and size harmonic filters to verify your harmonic mitigation method. And then we'll cover details about grid code harmonics and then summarize the webinar. Harmonics is one special category of power quality problems, which mainly deals with voltage and or currents at some multiples of the fundamental frequency caused by nonlinear loads on a power system. Many problems can be caused by harmonics, such as equipment failure and misoperation. The symptoms include the overheating of motors, cables, transformers, neutral wires, motor vibrations, nuisance circuit breaker operation, generator regulator malfunctioning, and so on. And there has to be economic considerations evaluated with regard to harmonics, such as the losses of motors, the losses of cables and transformers, device sizing, and the utility imposed penalties. When you do power factor correction studies, the capacitors require special considerations with regard to harmonics as well. And there are other significant issues, such as the interference to communication systems by higher frequency electromagnetic field. All the above states why harmonic analysis is important. And as renewable resources are growing substantially, it brings a lot of harmonic sources into the power system. Harmonic analysis, without a doubt, is an essential part of the interconnection study for renewable projects. Here are the goals we use ETAP to achieve by performing harmonic analysis. We determine the levels of harmonic voltages and currents in the system. Size the elements considering harmonic impacts, such as cables, capacitors, transformers. We determine the resonance condition and then verify the mitigation strategy. Finally, we check the compliance against the standards and the grid codes. Here's a list of common harmonic sources. In general, they can be categorized as voltage sources and current sources. Usually, the power grid is considered a voltage source. Synchronous generators and transformers, under certain conditions, they generate harmonic voltage or current. Power electronic devices, such as inverters, and other nonlinear loads such as arc furnaces, they are very commonly seen as voltage or current sources in the power system. In ETAP, the harmonic sources can be modeled by using the harmonic library or the element editor. Now let's see it in ETAP. When you receive a harmonic test report from the manufacturer, the first thing to begin the harmonic modeling is to plug in the data into a harmonic library. You can go to the library, harmonics, and we can add a harmonic library by selecting whether it is a current source or voltage source. For now, I'm going to select a current source, name it ETAP and the model name is sample, click OK. Now you will see the entry has been added. Now let's click on Edit button, and here opens the Harmonic Library Editor. Let me specify the fundamental frequency is 60 Hz. And now I'm going to plug in the data, which I have included in the Excel file into the harmonic library. First, I'll copy the orders, Control C, come back to my harmonic library, press Control V, so all the harmonic orders and the corresponding frequencies will be plugged into the table. Now I'm gonna come back and select the magnitude column, again Control C, to copy, come back to the harmonic library and control V. So now 
I get the data plugged into my harmonic library, and you can have a preview of the waveform and also the spectrum. Now let's click OK and close that library. So I'm going to plug in the harmonic library just created into a VFD. We open the VFD editor, go to the harmonic page, click on library, and you are able to find the manufacturer and the model. Now let's click OK. So you will see the basic information for the library we just created, the waveform with the points and the spectrum displayed in the editor. So now we're done with the library creation and the selection. There is another way that you can create characteristic harmonic waveforms. That is by selecting the IEEE 519 equation option. And here you can specify the parameters, for example, number of pulses, the shift angle, alpha, parameter XC, beta, maximum order. So ETAP is able to automatically populate the waveform and the spectrum based on the parameters you enter. The element impedance for each harmonic order is important in the study modeling. In general, the impedance is adjusted based on the harmonic frequencies and the types of components. For a triplet harmonic frequency, zero sequence impedance is adjusted to the actual frequency and the zero sequence network is used. A few features in ETAP are worth mentioning here. First one is the device skin effect can be considered based on IEEE 399 standard. This applies to induction and synchronous machines, transformers, reactors, and transmission lines. Static loads can be modeled as the R and X components connected in either series or in parallel. This option can be achieved by setting up an ion entry as shown in the slide. Cable positive and zero sequence impedance and susceptance per harmonic order now can be user-defined in an Excel file and selected in the corresponding cable editors. I have included the directory to the Excel template in this slide. With the model set up, now you are ready to do the analysis. ETA provides multiple analysis types. The harmonic load flow study carries out load flow calculations at the fundamental frequency. Then the fundamental voltages and current results are used to calculate different harmonic indices. The simulation considers each harmonic frequency at which any harmonic sources exist in the system, including both harmonics and interharmonics. The computed bus voltage THD, IHD, and the branch TDD and IHD, they are compared with their limits as specified by the selected harmonic rulebooks. If any violations are detected or element capacities are exceeded, they will be shown in harmonic load flow analysis alert view. These results can be viewed directly from the one-line diagram using the harmonic load flow slider and the harmonic display options editor. Plots are available to show both voltage and current waveforms in time domain and the harmonic spectrums in bar charts. Input and output reports are also available. Now let's see it in ETAP. To perform harmonic load flow calculation, let's click on the first button for run harmonic load flow in the harmonic module toolbar. After the calculation is completed, you will notice a harmonic order slider pops up. The first point in the slider is for total. Based on the name, you will be able to see the total harmonic voltage distortion and the corresponding RMS for every bus, and also the total harmonic distortion for current and RMS values for each branch. Worth mentioning here is that we added the total power factor for all the branches. That means the power factor you read when the time slider shows total considers all the harmonics. Now, if we move the slider one step, you will get the fundamental harmonic results. If you compare the power factor showed as in total against the fundamental 
order, which is the displacement power factor, you'll notice the difference. You can continue clicking on the harmonic order slider to read the results from each harmonic order at all the buses and all the branches. The same results can be generated by the plots. ETA provides two plot options to fit the user's purpose. Let's start from the harmonic analysis plot. We can plot a couple buses with both waveform and a spectrum with a order display. Here you will be able to see the bus spectrums and the waveforms in the plot and use the options at the top left corner to generate pictures or output the Excel format data and use it for your study reports. Another plot option we provide is called Plot Analyzer. Now let's plot a couple cables, both waveform and a spectrum, in the display order of Hertz. So now you will see the plots are generated on a HTML web page. With this plot format, you will notice that not only the waveform, but you will also get the dotted baseline, which is the ideal sinusoidal wave. These plots can be exported as picture files and used in your study reports as well. When we perform harmonic load flow studies, one important goal is to evaluate the total harmonic distortion and individual harmonic distortion against the standards. Also, we need to evaluate the capability of all the devices like cables, transformers, capacitors, filters, etc. So let's start seeing where can we define the limits of all the harmonic voltage and the current distortions? Let's go to rules, harmonics. Under the harmonic rule book, you will see a list of harmonic rules based on different standards and grid codes that has been predefined by ETAP. Let's click on edit and take a look at the format. The main content are in the voltage and the current tabs. In the voltage tab, you will see the harmonic distortion limits are categorized based on different voltages. You can specify the voltage total harmonic distortion and also every individual harmonic distortion limit. Similarly, in the current tab, the limits are categorized by voltages too. On top of that, we consider the short circuit current versus full load amp ratio as the new categories based on the standards. So here you can also define the total harmonic distortion limits and the individual harmonic distortion for every harmonic order. The standard and alert threshold can be defined in the harmonic study case. First, in the compliance page, you will have the option to select which rule ID to go by. There is a checkbox if you want to accept a certain locations connecting at a different utilities or having different harmonic requirements. You can check this checkbox and specify a different rule in a corresponding bus editor. In the alert tab, you can define the critical and the marginal alert thresholds for cables, transformers, capacitor, and filters. We can evaluate cable ampacity by considering the harmonic distribution factor. And also, you can consider the transformer derating by using eddy current losses. The transformer eddy current losses can be defined in the transformer editor impedance page. All the alert generated can be viewed by clicking on the alert viewer. You will get all the critical and the marginal alerts regarding the THD, IHD, and also about all the component capacity. You will see the details of the rating, operating value, percent operating, and which harmonic order that is causing the issue. All the harmonic results can be generated by Harmonic Report Manager. The study reports include the system input data, fundamental load flow results, 
system harmonic information and tabulation of bus voltages and branch currents with all harmonic contents. One particular concern with harmonics is the resonance condition in the power system. Because of the existence of both inductive components and capacitive components in the system, at certain frequencies, resonance conditions might occur at some buses. If the resonance occurs at a bus where a harmonic current is injected into the system, an overvoltage condition will be observed. The ETAP frequency scan program is the tool to investigate the system resonance problem. It calculates and plots the magnitudes and phase angles of bus driving point impedance over a frequency range specified by the user. Thus, any parallel resonance condition and its resonance frequency can be clearly identified. The harmonic frequency scan study also allows users to tune their harmonic filter parameters and test the final results. Frequency scan uses system positive and zero sequence impedance as base impedance. The results are presented in reports on the one line diagram as well as in the plots. Now let's see it in ETAP. The harmonic frequency scan analysis can be performed by clicking on the Run Frequency Scan button. After clicking on the button, you will see a harmonic frequency slider comes up. Instead of showing harmonic orders 1, 2, 3, 4, it shows all the harmonic frequencies that's specified in the study case. Under each harmonic frequency, you will notice a impedance value shows at the corner of each bus. This represents the bus driving point impedance. And this data can be used to determine where are the possible parallel resonance frequencies. The potential problems can be seen by clicking on the alert view. The alert view for frequency scan analysis will show you the bus ID and the potential harmonic order that would cause parallel resonance and the corresponding Z magnitude. Now if we want to take, take a look at the plot for bus 1, Let's go to the harmonic analysis plots. Let's select a frequency scan, bus 1, and we'll plot Z magnitude, Z angle, and order for bus 1. Based on the plot, that you will see there's a peak for order 21, which is the same information as was shown in the alert view. Similar to harmonic load flow calculation, we provide the plot analyzer option as well. Now let's take a look at bus 2 in plot analyzer. We'll select the output report, which was the harmonic frequency scan I just uh, performed. You will notice that the plots include the Z magnitude, which you are able to see the possible resonance point with the peak uh, again, the Z angle, a two-dimensional Rx diagram, and a three-dimensional Rx versus harmonic diagram. And you can rotate it and see it from different angles and do further analysis regarding it. One enhancement we did for frequency scanning can be seen from the study case. Now we support the frequency scan based on positive sequence and zero sequence impedance. The calculation would be done based on the option here. The tabulated results can be seen from the Frequency Scan Report Manager as well. The results are presented in reports which include the system input data and tabulation listing bus driving point impedances. A new module of unbalanced harmonic analysis, it considers detailed single phase and unbalanced three phase modeling. You can get voltage and current distortion per phase or per sequence. The frequency scan results are for each phase as well. To run unbalanced harmonic analysis, we go to the unbalanced harmonic analysis module. Here we run unbalanced harmonic load flow calculation. You will notice that on the one line diagram, all the results are displayed as per phase. 
you still have the harmonic order slider so that you can toggle the results among the total harmonic distortion and the individual harmonic levels. If we take a look at the display options, there are options for displaying uh, harmonic results per phase or per sequence. The plots can be done per phase as well. As you can see this waveform, we have bus 1 plotted, curves of phase A, phase B, and phase C. Similarly, you can run frequency scan on the unbalanced system as well. All the results displayed would be per phase, and the per phase results can be plotted by the plot options too. After the harmonic load flow and frequency scan studies are performed, the harmonic related issues should have been identified clearly. The next step is to decide on strategies for mitigating these problems and verify them. ETAP provides detailed modeling of harmonic filters and the tool of harmonic sizing. You can also model active harmonic filters and simulate its impact on harmonics, power factor correction, and unbalanced compensation. Now let's take a look at how we are able to use the harmonic filter sizing feature to determine the size of my filter. First, let's start by running a harmonic load flow calculation. My focus would be at bus 1. Let's plot bus 1 and find out at which harmonic order, based on the spectrum, we get the highest harmonic distortion. Based on the plot, you can see that the fifth harmonic order generates the highest distortion. Okay, now we are going to eliminate the fifth order. Let's take a look at the harmonic filter editor. We go to parameter page and click on the size filter. In order to size the filter, we need the harmonic order we would like to eliminate, which is five, the harmonic current at fifth order which I have checked and entered 170. For the sizing option, we select the power factor correction. My desired power factor is 100%. So we still need to find the existing power factor and also the load MVA. So let's see how I'm able to find the existing power factor. Let's move the other slider to the fundamental or the first order. You will notice that the power factor without the harmonic filter is 86.74. In order to find the connected load, let's set up another presentation and run a load flow calculation. Now I have another presentation for running a load flow. Let's run load flow and we are able to see the total KVA flowing into Bus 1 is 754 kVA. To size a filter, we need the per phase operating load. So the per phase load would be the number we read from the load flow calculation divided by 3, which is 0.25. So now I get all the information needed for doing a filter sizing. Let's click on the size filter button. You will see the results are calculated. And let's click on substitute to update the filter editor with the calculated results. Now let's click OK and do a verification of the filter sizing is valid. Let's make the filter in service. Now if I'm going to run harmonic load flow again, first let's take a look at the power factor. When I'm at a fundamental frequency, you will see now my power factor has been corrected to 100%. And if I go to the fifth order, you will notice that the total current flowing into bus 5 used to be 170 amp. Now it is only 4.2 amp. So that indicates the sizing of my harmonic filter is valid. The next topic we are going to cover is grid code harmonics. It is part of the ETAP grid code package. Other than harmonics, there are many more capabilities within this package. Please search grid code on etap.com for the related webinar videos. The grid code harmonic feature is usually required by the grid code during interconnection studies. It performs an automatic evaluation of harmonic distortion and resonance. 
It considers various power grid harmonic impedance conditions with the typical grid code requirements of 2,000 to 3,000 sample size. It takes double the number of calculations at the background, which means 4,000 to 6,000 harmonic load flow and frequency scan calculations. In this case, as a result, it provides incremental harmonic distortions, the worst case conditions, at the point of common coupling. Due to different interpretations and requirements from different power grids, the algorithms and output reports are customizable. This type of harmonic analysis, considering various power grid operation conditions, has been required by IEC 61000-3-6 and specified in many country grid codes such as ENA G55 in UK, EIR grid in Ireland, Hydro-Quebec in Canada, and many others. Let's first have an understanding of what's the requirement by the grid code. When you initiate the application for an interconnection study, the TSO needs to perform a measurement of the existing background harmonic distortion at the point of common coupling for each harmonic order. There is a predefined headroom the TSO needs to maintain for future expansions. Then an evaluation will be done by the TSO by considering the total short circuit capacity of the power grid and the connecting capacity of the new installation. The outcome of this evaluation is an allocated incremental harmonic voltage distortion level for each new installation applicant. The TSO will provide the background harmonic distortion level to the applicant as well. Now let's talk about what is the incremental distortion level. Before the new installation is connected, there's only background harmonic distortion, which was measured by the TSO, as we mentioned earlier. And there's a power grid equivalent impedance. When we connect a new facility impedance to the power grid, the total impedance seen from the PPC gets changed. This new impedance will have an amplification to the background harmonic voltage source. The new installation will not only add an impedance, the harmonic sources such as power electronic devices will introduce new harmonic injections to the power grid. So now we can see the incremental harmonic voltage distortion level caused by the facility is composed of two parts. And the total impact will be compared against the allocated incremental harmonic distortion limits. All the details will be included as part of the final result of this study. Next, let's talk about the power grid impedance. In the traditional harmonic simulations, in each scenario, only one set of power grid short circuit impedance will be considered. In grid code harmonic studies, the TSO usually requires the applicant to consider various system operating conditions, contingencies, future expansions, etc. This is achieved by providing a set of diagrams of RX plans defining the range of possible system impedance under each harmonic order. The data usually is provided in a form of corner points of locus polygons. Now, with this understanding, we are able to do the analysis and compare against the harmonic limits. Here is a chart showing the steps of performing a grid code harmonic analysis. Compared to many other studies you might have been familiar with in ETAP, the main difference here is the setup of the system impedance loci and the allocated harmonic limits. This information is set by an input Excel. Now let's see a demo using ETAP. To set up for the grid code harmonics analysis, let's start from the element modeling. All the element modeling are the same with the normal harmonic calculations, including the selection of all the harmonic sources and the setting up of all the harmonic impedances. 
Just a reminder, don't forget to create a harmonic library, add the background harmonic distortion, and select it for the utility element. The next step is to get the Excel template and enter the corresponding data we just talked about. The input Excel template can be found under ETAP Build Folder, Excel Templates, under Grid Code Harmonic. Now let's copy the file HA Grid Code equals to zero. In the project folder, create a subfolder named HA and paste the copied Excel template. The next step we need to do is rename this Excel file to the same ID as the Power Grid element. Now let's take a look at the content in the Excel file. In the Excel file, the tabs colored in green are for input data, and the tabs colored in red are to be written the output result data by the Python script. The first tab is for the system impedance loci, where you will see the table of different harmonic orders. And under each harmonic order, you are going to put all the corner points we just saw in the PowerPoint with the R and X values. And next, let's go to the allocated harmonic limits tab. This tab has the table we saw from the slides where has all the allowed incremental harmonic voltage distortion levels per harmonic order. We need to fill in all the numbers. Next to it, you will see the percentage of allowed incremental harmonic voltage distortion level with a few threshold values. This is used for color coding of the result figures. In many cases, you can keep the numbers as default. With these two types of data filled in, you can go ahead, save the Excel file, and close it. The next step is to set up the harmonic study case. Let's go to the grid code page. First, you need to select the power grid ID, and then we are going to generate the sample points. A typical number of sample points required by the TSO is 2,000 to 3,000. When we run the calculations, you don't have to always run 3,000 points every time. As mentioned earlier, this will take thousands of calculations at the backstage, which would take relatively longer time as your sample points increases. In many cases, if you are just going to run a quick evaluation before the very final stage, you have the option to user define a less number for the calculation in order to save some time. And you also have the option to choose corner points only to have a very simplified and fast evaluation. We provided the option of calculate the harmonic thevening equivalent as well. You can check it in the study case if that's needed. Another tab to set is for the plot page. Make sure that you select the utility connected VAS ID in the plot list which is my main bus here. The other tab settings are just the same as the normal harmonic evaluation study types. After the study case is set up, you can go to the harmonic right toolbar and click on run grid code harmonics. It will start all the automatic calculation. When the calculation is done, you can go to the report manager grid code tab and select to generate a Excel format of the grid code report. The grid code report will create it in a folder with the same name of your output report name that you gave. The output report will have the same input information that you have entered, followed by the tabs of results. A summary table is generated with the worst case incremental harmonic distortion for each harmonic order. All the results include what is the background harmonic distortion measured by the TSO, under the worst case condition, what is the amplification factor, the harmonic distortion caused by connecting the new facility impedance, the voltage distortion caused by the new facility harmonic sources, the incremental harmonic voltage distortion level, the allocated limit, 
and yes or no regarding the compliance and the corresponding R and X values. The results impedance loci tab in the Excel report includes a set of graphical outputs with color coding. The color coding indicates for each calculated sample impedance point, how far is the incremental distortion away from the limit. The Thevenin equivalent tab of the report provides the Thevenin impedance, the impedance angle, and the voltage magnitude at the point of common coupling, excluding the impact of the power grid. This data helps the utilities with future simulations and the limit settings for other installations. Some grid codes will require this information as part of the application. One point worth mentioning is that different grid codes have different interpretations and different requirements of this type of analysis. One advantage of ETAP is that basic calculation results are all saved in a SQLite database. If the grid code you need to work with have different factors to consider, different results to generate, or different formats of reports required, the modification can be done through Python scripts. The example here shows two grid codes with a similar concept but different calculation parameters and requirements. With a Python script, the report we showed you earlier can be modified to fit the new requirements with different calculation results. Please contact ETAP Help Center for detailed discussions. Now let's summarize this webinar. We discussed about harmonic related problems in the power system and the purpose of performing harmonic analysis. Then we talked about harmonic source modeling and impedance modeling. Different analysis types, including harmonic load flow, frequency scan, and balanced harmonic simulations, the modeling of harmonic filters and sizing. Then we discuss the details of grid code harmonics. Please contact ETAP Sales for further questions. Thank you.